So far I used every body object as one unit, and in this episode I create simple circle and rectangle shapes and they will serve as building blocks or components for a body object. So far I have implemented two different versions of the separating axis theorem. If I apply it to a rectangle, then the projection axis will be the ones perpendicular to the rectangle's edges, and since the parallel axis count as duplications and there is no need for more than one of them, that means that I will get two axes per rectangle. The other version is the one I used for the ball object. If I want to choose the axis for the ball with a rectangle or wall or any convex polygon, I need to find the closest vertex to the ball center and connect it with the ball center. Or if the ball is colliding with another ball, then I connect the two centers. And the vertices will always keep changing dynamically so that the two projections of the ball always form an interval with the length of two times radius. Now, there is an algorithm for applying the separating axis theorem on lines, rectangles and circles, but not for capsules. If I want to use the collision detection with SAT on a capsule object, I need to decompose it into a rectangle and two circle components. And I'm going to introduce a concept that makes a difference between a body and a shape. For example, I will have a ball object, which is a body, and it will have the physical attributes like velocity, mass or elasticity, plus it will also have a shape object as a component, which will be an object from the class called circle. The circle class will only store the geometrical properties, like the position or the radius, the ones I need for the collision detection, and it will also have a draw method that I will call in the draw method of the ball class. And similarly, the box class will have a rectangle component and the wall will have a line component. And the capsule class will have three shapes as components, one rectangle and two circles. I will use the SAT on each of those components and if not all of them returns false, then I know that one of the components is colliding, so the capsule itself is colliding too. So my plan now is that I create three more classes and they will be used as components of the bodies. I'm going to create three new classes, the line, the rectangle, and the circle. And the line will have a start point and an end point. Those will be the two vector elements of the vertex array, and it will have one direction unit vector and a magnitude property, which is the distance between the two vertices. And it will have a draw method as well, where the two vertices will be simply connected with a black line. The second shape is the circle. Its vertex array will be empty, because it will get those values during the SAT function. The position property is the circle center, and the R is the radius. And the draw method just draws a circle around the center point. I'm going to make its fill method optional later but for now I just comment it out. The rectangle class will have the most properties, although most of them are just taken from the box class. I will find the initial values of the four vertices. The first two are given as arguments, then I can calculate the direction unit and the length of the first edge based on the first two vertices. And then after that, with those values plus the width argument, I can get the last two vertices as well. I also store the central coordinate in the position property and the current angle and the rotation matrix will be properties too. The draw method is just connecting the four vertices. I have already written that in the box class so I can just take it from there. And there will be also a get vertices method that will find the new vertex coordinates using the new angle property that the rectangle object gets in the reposition method of the body object it belongs to. And that's it, I created the three shape classes and now I'm going to go and apply them in the body classes. First I go to the ball class and it will have a component property 
that I will call comp. And the component property will be always an array that consists of one or more shape objects. And the ball will have only one component, one circle. X, Y, and R are the arguments for that. And then in the throw method of the ball class, instead of all these lines, I can just call the draw method of its component. And the box class will have a rectangle component, and the wall class will have a line component, and I change their draw methods so that the draw method of every body class will call the draw method of their components. And I always need to update the position details of the components in the reposition method of the body classes. So for example, in the reposition of the ball class, I'm going to change the central coordinates of the shape component instead of the circle object itself. And same for the box class, except that in that case, I am also changing the component's angle property and call its get vertices method which means that I can get rid of these lines here because that's what's inside of the get vertices method of the component. The capsule object is a little bit trickier. First, I add two circle objects in the components array, one around the starting point, one around the end point. Then I need to find the first two vertices of the rectangle. So I take the capsule's end point, which is the second circle's center point, and I add the normal of the direction unit vector multiplied by the radius to it. That will be the first vertex. And by doing the same, starting at the start point, I can find the second vertex. And the last argument I need to create a rectangle object is the width, which will be two times radius for a capsule. And instead of pushing the rectangle component, into the components array. I use the unshift function, which puts it to the first place. So component zero will be now the rectangle and the two circles will be the second and the third elements of the array. Then in the draw method of the capsule class, I will call the draw method of the components, all the three next to each other. And in the reposition method, the capsule objects velocity property will change the position of the rectangle, which is the first component, and the position of the circle components will be determined relative to the rectangle component's position and its direction unit vector. And then I can delete the properties from the body classes that are now in their component objects. The ones that are storing the physics-related attributes, those can stay. So what I will have left is the mass, the inertia, the elasticity, the acceleration, the two velocities, and the player's Boolean variable. Once I have those properties in the capsule class, I can copy them to the other three body classes. I copied the properties from the capsule class, except for the inertia, because that will be different for every body class and the mass and the inverse mass for the wall will always be zero. And these are all the changes I was going to make for the body classes in this episode. The only thing that I have left to do in this video is making some changes at the separating axis theorem function because it uses many variables that now belong to the body's components and not to the bodies directly. So I'm going to go through the SAT function now and make sure that it doesn't try to use any variable that doesn't exist anymore. First of all, I go down to the main loop. I still have the ball object and the wall object from the previous episode. And instead of calling the objects, the body objects, I'm going to give their components as the arguments of the SAT function. So I start to go through the SAT function and I need to rename the variables. 
here the first function is the find axis so I go there and I change the instance conditions I'm using circle instead of ball and rectangle instead of box like that and the next one will be the get first shape axis first of all I rename this function to get shape axis and then I do the same that I just did right now ball will be circle and box will be rectangle I need to rewrite this condition as well and in the find axis function it's important that the axis of the first object always go to the axis array before the axis of the second object so I put this one in front of this one here and I think that's everything I needed to change in the SAT function let's go and check the canvas I'm not sure why the ball is blue now but the point is that the MTV is being displayed correctly I go and check if it's working with a box instead of a ball as well so I comment out the test ball and use the text box and that's definitely not perfect let's check the error message line 151 I forgot this this dot I hope that was everything and I think oops no 320 in the key control method I forgot to refer to the component objects direction unit vector and one more try I think that's all right now okay and now the capsule which will be again a bit trickier than the others if I just create a new capsule object and call it like I did the other objects then guess what will happen then the SAT can only detect the collision with the central rectangle because that's the first component in the components array if I wanted to check every single component of the capsule then I need to iterate through the component array of the capsule object and apply the separating axis theorem on each of them and I also make this wall a little bit longer and I change the angular friction in the capsule class to 0.6 again and if I go back to the canvas then the collision will be detected whenever one of the components is colliding with the wall and I can see that the minimal translation vectors are displayed for each of the colliding components and what I'm gonna do is if I have more than just one minimal translation vectors then I will pick the largest one to apply it on the capsule object in order to do that the SAT function will return with three different variables and those are the magnitude of the minimal overlap the smallest axis and the vertex of the object the minimal overlap belongs to I comment out this vector drawing here and then down in the main loop I will create a new object literal to keep track of the best SAT details I initialize their values as null and then they will get new values inside of the loop first I just display the penetration value on the canvas to see if it's working and I do see values sometimes even two on top of each other that happens if there are more than just one overlapping component in that case I'm going to keep the result with the longest overlap for which all I need to do is changing the condition inside of the for loop then I can get rid of this here and after the for loop I can say that whenever 
the penetration's value is larger than zero, which means it's not null, then I want to display the minimum translation vector. And the details for that vector are now in the best SAT variable. And now if I have several components overlapping in the same time, then instead of those several minimum translation vectors, I will only see the one that is the longest one. And if both objects are capsules, then I need to iterate through both component arrays for which I will need to use an embedded for loop. I rename this i variable to o1comp and the other ones will be o2comp. And I create that new capsule object and I will also need to call its reposition method because the rectangle needs to find the vertices. I actually set this to a little bit bigger and then I can go and check the canvas with two capsule objects. Most of the time calling the penetration resolution once will be enough to separate the two capsule objects. It can happen though that the capsule gets pushed away from one component of the other capsule but still overlap with another component then it will take more iterations to separate the two body objects and it's not impossible to solve that problem I guess but this, what I have now, will be enough.